<laughs> Hi folks, look at this, we're back on the concrete forms for the underground bunker workshop. Yeah, I know everyone's so impatient, you want me down the hole digging, but you know, stuff has to happen first gents, you know, like, uh, oh and ladies, right. how are you doing? Uh, you know, you've got to have these precasts made up, otherwise there's no point going down there, we've got to have the top sorted out, otherwise we can't go down there, uh, you know. Perfect planning prevents piss poor performance, lads, isn't it? Eh? Uh, well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Anyway, either way, look, this is our this is our wooden form. From this, we're going to pull a mould, and then we can take several concrete casts, concrete moulds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the first one I made, I think. I don't know. Uh, or the fir first one of these red ones I made, spraying on gel coat um, onto onto wood. And this has got a particularly bad finish on it, so I'm going to start off just uh, just going over this um, with with a uh, high grip paper, and then uh, give it a bit of a polish because um, you know I want the I'm not going to go mad, but I want the best finish I can get on my concrete moulds because uh, they'll last a lot longer, and I've got a pull you know dozens of lumps of concrete out of them all, so uh, yeah. I think it's worth doing. Let's uh, give it a go and see how well it buffs up. Weird old stuff, this gel coat, you know. Um, it is uh, it is making me a tiny bit nervous about um, using these as concrete moulds. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the same gel coat on the on the finished mould because um, it cuts so easily with the uh, with the cutting compound. So uh, I think I'm doing the right thing, getting it flat. Um, this is as flat as I'm going to get it, though. Um, I, I could I could do a better job, but, you know. I'm not going to. We'll uh, we 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 got most of the. The large flats, uh, nice and smooth. They they've gone hazy though. Obviously, you can see, um, and the knobbly bits now will get taken care of with the wax, I suppose. Okay, so we've got a um, finished bit of glass on this uh, on this wooden mould. Um, uh, obviously, with this design, we've got a lot of shears. Yeah, a lot of uh, um, a lot of faces that are perpendicular to the direction this mould has to come off the other mould. You know, the glass has to come off the the wooden buck. Um, but we used, uh, and it's not coming off. <laughs> I should have done this on camera. I've just been uh, peeling it on the sides. But um, I think I'm all the way around now. Or maybe we'll get it off. Either way, because I used uh, both wax and PVA, um, I'll try a little bit longer to get it off. But if that doesn't work, then what you've got to do with the PVA um, is... Uh, stick water in between them and the water dissolves the PVA and then it will and then you end up with a, a slimy 
slimy PVA that will actually help it pop out in between in between the surfaces. I've just got uh, nowhere to grab hold of it at the minute to even put any force on it. Well, that could have gone worse uh, for this part. Probably not for the moulds. <laughs> Uh, you just wouldn't release from, um, from these bits, and I thought I thought with that uh, with that draft on there, you know, that sort of angled, uh, it's angled all the way around, apart from the um, spots where the bolts are going to sit. Uh, yeah, I thought that would um, that would make it just pop on out, but obviously not. <laughs> obviously not. The ends came apart. It was the ends that I was expecting to have trouble with you know, I've got a bit of a weird finish here from the mold release that might actually come off when I scrub it no no we can give this another buff now like the bits that were easy to buff before are going to be hard to buff now and the bits that were hard to buff are going to be easy to buff obviously because <laughs> we've got the reverse haven't we so yeah I really can't afford to have any more cock-ups um, you know that was my insurance policy it was my intention to leave that until I had Till I'd pulled the mould out of here in case I needed to remake this one, but um, hey ho, we shall carry on, see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully, good things happen. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's have a look at this uh, seven foot section. Um, it's seven foot roof section, it's still got a uh, Tiny, tiny bit of uh, roughness on the paint. It's, this one's not at all bad, actually. This is, I think this must have been the last one I did, or either way, I'd, I'd got things a bit flatter by the time I got around to this one, so I'm just going to go straight to buffing it. Uh, but I'm going to use a lot more wax this time. Hopefully it should come apart a little easier. So we got three coats of the regular wax on, and then uh, I'm going to do another three of this uh, this um, other wax. I don't know. This is this is this has got to go on top. Um, this is a fast drying one. It cut, you put it on and take it off straight away again. Uh, then leave it for a little bit. Whereas the other one, you put it on, let it sort of skin over, and then take it off after 30 minutes. Um, this one you take off immediately, then leave it, which is, you know, different. Change of pace, it's nice. It smells delightful. I've got a cut of the grass anyway, so it'll be a good to do a bit of um a bit of lawn mowing in between uh in between coats, wouldn't it? Hey? We'll space things out. Okay, so we've got uh six coats of wax on there now, uh three of each. Um I'm just gonna stick the PVA release on. This time I'm gonna use a lot more, yeah. Um, and then it should dissolve properly when I get it wet if there's a you know a little bit of a gap for the capillary to fucking work its way through you know you know um, but <laughs> I found earlier like you know the more more wax I put on the harder it is to uh, dust this on in, in, initially and not have it bead off and then it takes hours to dry and you've got to wipe it off and then you've taken most of the wax off as well so I'll just dust just dust dusty string fields there um, Lots of dust coats, lots of dust coats, and then some nice thick coats. There we go. Been working on this for a day now, and it still looks exactly the same. <laughs> uh, we've got a bit of speed tape there. Because I, I caught that corner. How, how I managed to catch that corner, I do not know. But that was you know ages ago when I was putting it away in the container. Um, yeah, so six coats of wax and about half a litre of the PVA release agent. 
Uh, I can't really touch this till tomorrow morning now. Um, it's all right. I'll find something else to do. Okay, so I'm going to try a different approach with this. The um, that one, that one there. I I did all the glassing in one go. This um, and I, I did have a couple of little air bubbles in the corners, um, so the gel coat was unsupported, and, and we can see that it's just popped off in a couple of places. That's okay with this one. That's okay with this one. That's why I did this one first. This is a. Uh, it's still got all the parting compound in there, but uh, here, that's uh, that's glass. You can see because the, there's a little a little void, a little air bubble. It's these tight corners that have problems problems with. Right, so here, what I've done, um, I put glass down and basically made a, a sort of a butt joint on the corners so we don't have glass going all the way around it's just two pieces of glass butted up to each other let it dry and I've knocked it all back and that goes all the way around here same at the top there so we do have fibers touching each other and supporting the gel coat and I'll just uh, I'll just do my best now to wrap wrap the next layers of glass around it without getting air bubbles but if I did get air bubbles, it wouldn't be a fucking disaster. All right? <laughs> okay, I've got a big air bubble here. Uh, there I actually have two layers of glass on that corner, so I knocked the top one off. I just ground it back with the um, uh, with disc in the drill. Um, bloody brush fell apart. I've got um, uh, <laughs> a brush glass composite going on here, hybrid. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's the, that's the plan. I'm just going to do one end, because I've got to go out in a minute anyway. And if this doesn't work, I'll try and build up the corner with some filler on that end. Um, it is not critical on this one, because this is only a mould to make more moulds. But, um, you know, I'm learning and I want to learn on this less than critical piece before we get onto the the moulds that are actually going to have concrete poured into them. Because they want to they wanna be as durable as possible, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Okay, I had to break the uh, break the mold out again. But check this out. This is what happens when you put a, a much thicker layer of that PVA on. You get this uh, nice satisfying peel off at the end, eh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's all worth it, lads. It's all worth it. Jeez, this one this one taught me a lot, you know. One taught me a lot, which is good. It's what it's all about, eh? Well, folks, for now, the uh, the horrible spiky glass fibery sticky nightmare is uh, is over, but not for good, right? Um, I didn't feel much of it because what I don't know. I, I you know I'm always uh, always at a loss as to to what to do in my shitty videos because. Um, Obviously, I'm not a glass fibering expert. A long way from it. You know, the more of it I do, the more I realise I'm um, making some pretty serious mistakes throughout this. But um, but what? Uh, yeah, it just you know, it's a long old job. Uh, uh, lots of prep work, which is never fun to watch. But um, either way, either way, the long and short of it is, we got three. These aren't even the finished moulds, are they? Look, because now I've got to take actual moulds out of these. Out of these parts, we've got um, roof section, roof section, and then the wall section. Wall section, you'll notice, is a little bit different. It's not just facing the other way up, but um, I left the sides off it because those are the bits that I was struggling with most. Uh, and then, because I'd made the decision to leave the sides off before I prepped the mould, I, you know, subconsciously, I did a half ass shitty job of prepping the mould, and it stuck. So I, I lost the, uh, I lost the. Um, the male anyway, which you know defies the point of leaving the sides off because yeah. <laughs> Jesus, it's all about being methodical, isn't it? Like, so, such is everything in life, you just got to figure out a decent way to do it and stick to it. Like, I reckon I had my mold release sussed on that second one, the big one there, but because uh, it's an awkward shape with that sides, um, you know, it's still very difficult to get get um, wedges in there and pop it off but uh, with this one if I'd have done the same mould prep as this one like it would have been golden and I would have had the the original male as well as the secondary female like and obviously we now need to make a tertiary a secondary 
mail. Well, I don't know. None of this even makes sense anymore. God, I've sent myself loopy with the fumes of this stuff as well. Uh, you, know, just, you know, leaving the door shut, silly thing to do. Uh, it does get into your head after a while, the old resin, but um, there's much worse things anyway, I suppose. I'm only using the polyester. Anyway, let me give you a close up look at this. I'm just, yeah, sorry, this <laughs> is very unprofessional of me. Eating cheese whilst we're making a video, lads. Okay, so, um, yeah, you can see the, uh, see the, the gleaming gel coat off of this one, yeah, this is, uh, this one came out nice. I'm quite happy with this. Um, my biggest mistakes, you can't actually see them now that I've put the top coat on, but, uh, what, what I did was, because I was, yeah, getting around, getting around this hard 90, which won't be a problem in the next step, because we can fillet it with some filler, but we can't, you can't really do that when you're going around the outside, yeah, so, uh, what I ended up doing is getting, you know, cut it, glass there and glass on the other side. Butting it up means there's no strength in it, and then trying to get over it whilst it was wet with a with a sheet that went all the way around the corner. Um, so if there is gel coat floating, well, it, it, you can't be in a situation where there's gel coat floating, which I think has happened in a couple of spots here where I've got the bubbles. It's just um, I'll never find them now. But there's you know obviously little little sections where the gel coat's just floating on a bubble um, it, it wasn't that bad but I you know obviously this is a lot bigger and I wanted to avoid that so I went with the uh, just butting two bits up against each other and then uh, and then what it ended up drying and you know, this one ended up taking me about three days and all because I'd have to go back and grind things till it's flat because you know you end up with little spiky bits poking up and whatever and then you definitely can't get glass to go over the top of that without making even bigger bubbles so uh, yeah there are bubbles in here but they shouldn't be a problem um, this one the bubbles might be a problem but this is only a, a short little mould so that's okay and this one definitely got no bubbles by the time I got to this one my glassing was on par I used minimal cuts even even though this is the longest one and the most technical one uh, with funny shapes um, uh, but I, I left out the hard bits with the walls I can you know my, my logic being I can easily uh, bond a bit of timber underneath it and then put aside so that'll actually be removable so I've got no chance this one I really have to get a couple of good moulds off of this at least um, hopefully more but I need this to stay in one piece I can't afford to to ruin this one after you know t taking it off one mould I kind of can with these two kind of can I don't want to but um, yeah so we'll, we'll basically turn this into a three piece mould so it's got edges on it like that um, and I've got to take this mould prep even more seriously <laughs> Oh, learning, learning, learning. I, you know, I am regretting not having done these in steel, but I know the finished product's going to have some nice, uh, nice curves and bevels that would have been trickier in steel. But um, obviously, it's taken a while, isn't it? But uh, you know, such is life. Such is life. These are important bits. So we've got the doorway, hallway, wall, and the wall's going to be the same throughout probably even for the rooms as well which means to get into the rooms then we'll have to do a another uh, sort of nine foot version of that one basically yeah or we might try and do something a bit different i don't know i don't know we're a little way off doing uh, worrying about the walls the the the, uh, the the rooms yeah we've got to get into the hallway first but uh yeah that's it that's it guys that's it i'm gonna have a little uh little break from glass fibering for a week or two um but I'm going to get a digger in before the end of this week and start burrowing around the edge of the hole. Uh, I don't know if you just want a video on the digging so I can explain what's going on there because there's stuff that you guys don't know about yet, that exciting stuff. Um, or whether I should start the concreting, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I don't know, I don't know, let me know, alright, just do a digging vid, I think, maybe, um, yeah, alright. All right, all right, that's great then, isn't it? It's decided. All right, folks, <laughs> take it easy, everyone. Hope you're all, uh, all having fun, as much fun as I am. All right, <laughs> okay. So, you know, you can tell by how disgusting and scummy this one is that it's been in the shed a few weeks. Um, I don't know how long has this taken. Yeah, a fair old few weeks. Anyway, all right. I'll see you all later. Bye bye.